Praise God, saints. Truly, I thank God for being here today. I thank God for another opportunity to stand before the people of God and to minister God's word. I thank God for my pastor, Pastor James Anderson, for allowing me to stand here and teach the people of God his precious word. This week, we're going to continue with the teaching in Revelation. The title of our lesson this week is Your First Love. The focus thought that the author has given us is we must stay focused on our first love, Jesus Christ. The focus verse is coming from Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. The lesson text is coming from the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. I will begin reading the focus verse, Revelation, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars, in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and which has tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and has found them liars. And has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. But this, but this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of, of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And our lesson this week is continuing, as I said earlier, with the first couple of chapters in Revelation. As we begin, just a little bit of the background story, John was banished to the island of Patmos, and there he received the revelation from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in the revelation, he received in the vision seven candlesticks and seven stars. Well, these candlesticks represented the seven churches in Asia Minor. And the stars in his hand represented the leaders in these churches. And each of these churches had various spirits. And the Lord addressed those things and showed those things to John. As he said, write these things that thou seest. And write these things that I tell you. So when we find, as we begin to look at the lesson, it talks about Christ being in the midst of the seven churches just like Christ is in the midst of our churches today. So these candlesticks, as we go forth in the lessons, illustrate the churches in Asia Minor, and the stars represent the leaders. So as we go forth in our lesson this week, he begins to say in our focus verse, he started to saying, we must stay focused on our first love, Jesus Christ. There's an excerpt that best describes what was going on during this time frame in the church of Ephesus. It reads, the church in Ephesus 
had this problem. Because of their love for Christ, they worked hard, rejected evil, expelled false prophets, endured suffering. Yet, somehow, while focusing on these things that they were doing, they lacked the love of God and began to lose the focus and relationship with that love of God. Now, as the excerpt go forth in the scripture, and I, again, I want to read this because it's important. It's in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 2. And I'll read this because this is the background of what we're talking about today. It says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and thou cannot bear those which are evil. Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and found them to be liars. The church in Ephesus was doing a lot of good things. And yet, John wrote these words that was given to him from our Lord and Savior. Nevertheless, somewhat I have something against you. You have left your first love. And it's interesting how that we have a play on words because when he says, thou has left thy first love, well, what was the first love? Love. Thou has left thy first love, which was love. So at some point in the founding of the church, love was present. And the people got so busy doing that they began to forget who and what they were doing it for. We get busy and we use a terminology that I find very interesting. And I've said this myself, that I've got to find some time and, and, and do some things for God. I've got to find some time and, and study more. I've got to find time to pray and find time to read and I've got to find time to do various things. But if you listen at the words that I said, I said I have to find time. You see, when it comes to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I don't need to find time for God. I need to make time. And see, that's the difference between finding time and making time. That's the difference in establishing a relationship. That's the difference in letting someone that we love know that I love you because I want to spend time with you. When each of us was dating, it wasn't an inconvenience that we had to find time to spend with the one that we loved. We made time. We can pull a double time shift, an overtime shift. We can be dog tired. But because we love this man or this woman, we made time. And so therefore today we use the term, I've got to, what do you mean we got to find time? We got to make time. And so I realized in my life with all that I'm doing, and the church in Ephesus was doing some great things. The, the, the author talked about what they were doing. But it said, nevertheless, somewhat I have something against you. You have left your first love, which was love. Saints, we've got to make time. Not find time. Make time to spend with our Lord and Savior. We love him. He loves us. And so therefore, in the process of love, we show him. The author in our lesson talks about leaving the first love, and that's, that's the whole lesson. It's important for us to meditate on God's word. It's important for us to make time 
to reflect on his goodness. Sometimes when I'm on the road driving, I like to think about the Lord. One of the things I love to do is fish. My wife knows that I enjoy fishing. And for me, it's not always about catching fish. But I'm out on the river, the water, the lake, or wherever I am. I have my music, my little speaker on the side, and I got my gospel music playing. I'm out there, got the pole in the water, the line in the water, and I'm sitting on a rock, and I'm thinking about my Lord and Savior. I'm reflecting and meditating. And I'm sure people go by saying, this guy's supposed to be fishing, and yet he's got music blasting out here, and yeah. That's my time that I want to reflect on the love of God. We have those in the church that love to walk. So whatever that you do, but you got to make time, make time to spend with our Lord and Savior. Because if we love him, we want to let him know, Lord, I love you. I want to spend time with you. There was a song that was sung last week by Minister Cooper. And the song said, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. When we decide to make Jesus our choice, that means that we have decided to make him a priority in our life. That means that I've decided to be thy servant. I have decided to surrender all to you. The song says some folks choose silver and gold and various things, but these things they choose and these things will perish away. But I have decided to make Jesus my choice. And because I choose to make him my choice, I choose to spend time with him. I choose to let him know that I love you because he loved me. So I cannot allow myself to get caught up in doing things. I am a Sunday school teacher. And I enjoy being a Sunday school teacher. But I cannot allow being a Sunday school teacher to become a duty and say, oh, well, I got to go teach a Sunday school lesson this week and this, I don't know. No. I love what I do. I believe that God called me to be a teacher. And if I believe that this is my calling to be a teacher, then therefore I must exercise in the gift that God has given me, and that is teaching. But I cannot forget who gave me this gift. I cannot forget the calling. You see, I cannot focus so much on teaching that I forget to spend time with the one that gave me the gift. Lord, I thank you for the gift that you have given me. I thank you for the gift that you allowed me to be a teacher. I stand and teach not because I'm, I'm smart or I know all the scriptures. No. I teach that which God has given me. I want to humble myself to be a teacher, an instrument to be used by my Lord and Savior. But in the midst of doing and serving God, I cannot forget my first love. And that is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So therefore, I got to stop saying I got to make time. I'm sorry, let me reverse that. I got to stop saying I got to find time. And I need to start saying I've got to make time. That's right. I've got to make time. For the one that I love. The author brings out something also in our lesson. It says the church in Ephesus was doing and going through a lot of things. But sometimes we have to look at the reasoning behind what we do. Is it a duty 
that we do or we do it because we love the Lord. You see, there is a difference in doing things out of love and doing things because it's a duty. I remember growing up and my parents would take me to church and from the age of 10, this is the only doctrine that I knew is the apostolic doctrine. And many times you would hear me say this, I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ when I was 10 years old. Because I was baptized and I was in the church doesn't mean that I was a part of the church or in the church. My body was in the church. I came to church because my mother made me go to church. There were days I didn't want to go to church. There are days I wanted to stay home. There are days that I wanted to play with my friends. There were many days Cooper didn't want to go to church, but my mother made me go to church. Either go to church or get a whooping. So what would you choose to do? <laughs> Nevertheless, I came to church because I was made to come to church. As I got older, I realized something. I was 18 years old, left home, joined the army. Now, no mom, no one can make me go to church. I was down in Texas, in Colleen, Texas, Fort Hood. And I remember saying, guess what, Cooper? Nobody knows you around here. So if you don't want to go to church, you don't have to go to church. And so for a while, I did the wild thing. I did all kinds of things. Many things I'm not proud of that I've done today. But nevertheless, at one point in time, I realized something. That I want to serve God. And when I made that commitment, that's when I can truly see the blessings of God. You see, God blessed me along the way. Even when I was in sin, God still blessed me and kept me safe. But when I made up my mind, when the song said, when I chose to follow him, that's truly when God blessed me. And when God filled me with the Holy Ghost, he blessed me more abundantly with his love. But you see, there is a difference. When I was a child, I went to church because I was made to go to church. But now I go to church because I want to go to church. I choose to serve the Lord. There is a difference. So therefore, what we do today is it out of duty? Is because my family expects me to do this? Or I do what I do because I love the Lord. And that's what the lesson is here. The church in Ephesus did many great things, but it became a duty and a task. And because of this, they forgot the reason why they were doing it. Love. Love is the key. And therefore, that's why God told the church and he instructed them in the candlesticks. It doesn't matter what you do, because if love is not behind what you do, it is still vain. And as John illustrated, he says, I will remove you because you have left your first love. All that we do in the church and outside in our community, love has to be the basis of what we do. Don't forget your first love. All that we do and we're working for God, let's remember who it is that gave us the talents, and the gifts that we have today. It was God. It was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I cannot forget, I don't want to forget my first love. And it's just, just a play on words. Thou has left thy first love. And thy first love was love. I love you, Lord. And I cannot forget the one that gave me the gift that I have of teaching. Take time to reflect. Take time 
to just sit in a park, sit by the river, sit in your backyard, but take time and just embrace. Sometimes you just want to say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. I don't want anything. I just want to say, Lord, I love you. Remember that first love that we had naturally in our life. You made time to spend with that person. Now make time to spend with our Lord and Savior, the one that loves us. Let him know that you love him. Let him know that you love him. Praise the Lord, saints. Thank